It's there forever. It's there forever. It's your family legacy, your family tree, and you can access it from anywhere, anytime, and it's yours to keep forever and to share with your children and your children's children and their grandchildren. It will always be there. You know, think about if you could hear one of your ancestors' voices, you know, how much that would mean, telling, the, telling you about their trip over to Ellis Island. You know, it would just be so powerful. I met him at a party and then we decided to go skiing the next day. We were on a ski trip and we went skiing the next day and I would have loved to have recorded. <laughs> he said that he was happy that he was the second best skier on the trip. And um, yeah, that was it. I just knew I was gonna marry him. <laughs> you know, I remember calling my mother and kind of gushing about it. I just met this guy and he's just so great and his smile lights up the room and I just feel so different when I'm talking to him and, you know, and he's a great skier. And it just all fell into place right then to be able to call up a service. And I might have erased the message later. Say he wasn't the right guy, I would have erased the message, right? To be able to have our voices saying that. It just would have been so powerful. Imagine being able to share that with my children now. This is, here we are guys, 17 years ago. There's mommy and daddy, the day they met. A great love story. One of the greatest things, um, my kids, the second they get around my parents, particularly my mother, because my mother tells great stories. The second they get around her, Nanny, could you please tell us a story? Nanny, tell us a story. We were just with them today. And I must have heard 20 times, Nana, please tell us a story. <laughs> and it's really great that my mom is calling up the service and leaving messages so that even when I'm not with my parents, I can say, oh, do you guys want to hear the story about when mommy kicked the hole in Uncle Maddie's door? Do you want to hear that story? <laughs> and the kids, oh, yes, yes, yes. But they don't want to hear it from me. They want to hear it from Nanny. And um, the other thing she's doing is she's reading a lot of special books that mean a lot to her that she wants them to hear in her voice so that she they can share them with their children as they get older. My husband's grandmother is still here. She's 91 and we've been working on making some recordings with her telling her life experiences. As you can imagine there are a lot. 91 year old who's still really with it and really cool and um, it's great to be able to sit down with her with a Manhattan and get her to share her stories. One of the things I'm really excited about, it's today's the first day of summer, and I have made very few plans this summer. One of my plans is to make sure that I sit down with my parents in a group setting, just stick a microphone in between us, and we're gonna record a family dinner, and we're gonna talk about our histories, and we're gonna talk about stories, and I'm gonna save all that. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing with my husband's family and his grandmother which would be a really fabulous thing. Just think about that. My, she's 91 and she can till, still tell us all her stories clearly and articulately. And to have that in her voice to share with my children and my children's children and their children, you know, that is so, it's, it's there's nothing, there's nothing like it. To hear a, your own story in your own voice, you know, to have my children hear Mimi's story in her own voice. It's just going to be so great for them to have forever. Obviously, I love Remember Voices, and I want to use it in any aspect I can, because I just think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I, think it's, I just think it's so exciting to be able to have all this and to be able to archive it. And yeah, I, I would, I'm taking that on, absolutely. I'll be the family historian, no problem. I'm the one who asks the questions. <laughs>